Welcome back everyone to Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Danny Burke and today's video is a top 10 scary ancient Egyptian legends. In today's video we're going to Egypt and also going back way in time, thousands of years ago, to the land of the pharaohs, the pyramids and rumours of evil curses. What did these people believe about life, the afterlife and what creepy stories have happened since then? Let's find out. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Retainer Sacrifice. During the first dynasty in Egypt about 5,000 years ago, people practiced a very particular form of human sacrifice. When a pharaoh or other noble died, their servants would also be killed so that they could serve them in the afterlife. Back then, the ancient Egyptians centered their whole culture and religion on the life to come. The pharaohs wanted to live as they had done in their normal lives, being served by those who had served them, surrounded by luxury and a life of ease. That's why they were always buried with great treasures and, in the early days, they were surrounded by the bodies of their servants. It's thought that most, if not all the servants were actually more than willing to be sacrificed. It's thought that they may have seen being sacrificed at their king's death as the only way to secure eternal life, which after all was the whole purpose of life to begin with. That's not to say they wouldn't feel the fear that any of us would if we knew we were about to be sacrificed. Next up at number 9 now we have the spinning artifact. In 2013 a story went viral from Manchester Museum in England. Locked behind a glass cabinet, an ancient Egyptian statue had been inexplicably spinning in place. Even though nobody could actually touch it, the statue was spinning throughout the day. None of the other statues nearby were though. It was a 10 inch statue of Neb Sanu which dates back nearly 4,000 years ago and was found in a mummy's tomb. This time lapse video shows it turning during the day but at night it remained totally still. As the story travelled, many people came to visit it and see this cursed object for themselves. Some pointed to the ancient Egyptian belief that if a mummy is destroyed, a statue like this can act as an alternative vessel for the spirit. So was this statue? you really holding the spirit of a 4,000 year old mummy? Well, some still think so, but it appears the spinning was actually caused by vibrations from buses outside and people walking through the museum. Since then, they glue the statue down and it hasn't moved anymore, for now at least. Next up at number 8 now we have the burning. The ancient Egyptians believed that Ra was the sun god and that he created the world. He was revered and worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. That's why it was very serious if someone vandalised or robbed a temple that was dedicated to him. Those who were found guilty of disrespect Respecting the sun god were burned alive. For the ancient Egyptians, this was seen as the ultimate insult to a person's dignity as their spirit would have no body to dwell in. Next up at number 7 now, we have King Tut's Curse. King Tut is the name for Tutankhamun, also known as the Boy King. In 1923, this young pharaoh's tomb was discovered by two archaeologists by the name of Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon. Now they found an inscription on the entrance to the tomb with these chilling words, Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. The archaeologists did not heed the warning though and entered the tomb anyway. They found treasures beyond anything that had been found before. The artifacts were taken out along with Tutankhamun's mummy and sent off to museums around the world. Six weeks after this, Lord Carnarvon died. He was only the first though. After that, relatives of the people who opened the tomb kept dying in mysterious circumstances. One case involved their personal secretary being found dead in her bed, which in turn drove her father to suicide. In total, there were 11 11 deaths that have been linked to King Tut's curse. Some say they were just coincidences, others say there may be something to the curses of the ancient Egyptians. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Priest Ghost. In 2017, ghost hunters caught what they believe to be the spirit of an ancient Egyptian priest on camera right next to his own tomb. Ghost hunting couple Sean Reynolds and Rebecca Palmer were standing in the tomb of a priest called Nasiamun. Now He lived in ancient Egypt over 3,000 years ago and his tomb is now in Leeds City Museum in England. They set up electrical readers to pick up energy signals and were starting to get quite freaked out when this happened. Okay. Oh God. Oh my God, Paul, 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 look. Oh, well, that, that was me, but look, that's going yeah. off. No. Just as Rebecca reported seeing an orb on her camera, a shadow of a person is seen darting across the floor towards the tomb. They said the top of the shadow was in the shape of a pointed hood and it walked straight towards that tomb. Now they believe it could be the spirit of the priest, lost and wandering for eternity after his tomb has been moved thousands of miles away. Moving on to number 5 now we have the Great Pyramids. These are perhaps some of the most famous landmarks left by the ancient Egyptians. They are tombs of pharaohs. Meant to help them reach the afterlife and become gods. As such, it's no surprise that some of them have haunted stories attached to them. Many eyewitnesses reports have recorded a man and his three children roaming around the Great Pyramids looking for something who knows what. 
Some have presumed he is searching for his wife and the mother of his children. Another creepy story involving the haunting of the pyramids is Pharaoh Khufu himself emerging from the pyramid where he is buried. He is dressed in traditional ancient Egyptian armour. He appears at midnight and walks the streets, visiting houses and telling the inhabitants to leave the area. If ghosts have unfinished business to linger around here on earth, it looks like Khufu has some serious unfinished business left. Next up at number 4 now we have the confession. In ancient Egypt, police brutality was an everyday occurrence. It wasn't really a bad thing that people would protest about, it was just the way things were. It was the norm. When it came to extracting confessions from criminals, nothing was too far. Torture was a very common method used by the police. Torture victims were forced to name accomplices in crimes, to reveal the hiding place of stolen goods and to describe the methods used in a crime through torture. Information on methods allowed the authorities to strengthen security measures. The most common torture method was called the bastinado, which involved beating the bottom of the foot with a stick. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the Titanic. Some people believe that an ancient Egyptian curse is responsible for sinking the Titanic. The story goes like this, there was once a mummy board called the Unlucky Mummy. It wasn't actually a mummy at all, it was a painted wooden board of an unidentified woman. When it was moved to the British Museum in London, staff began to report strange goings on. They would hear loud banging coming from the artifact. One man took a photograph of it and the picture looked nothing like the real thing. Its eyes stared furiously out of the picture and were described as malevolent. A few weeks later, the same photographer died in mysterious circumstances. A while later, one of the guards whose job it was to watch over the board also died. As the creepy stories mounted, the museum was said to get so sick of it that they sold the board to an American archaeologist. And so, in 1912, he set sail with the mummy board from England to America. That ship was the Titanic. Some believe the mummy board was responsible for the sinking of the Titanic, others say it never left England at all. Still an interesting story either way. Next up at number 2 now we have the mummy ghosts. In 1699 Louis Penicher talked about one of the first mummy curses in his book called Treaties on Embalming. He told a story of a Polish man who had purchased two mummies from Alexandria in Egypt, hoping to study them for medical purposes. As he was sailing across the Mediterranean Sea, he began to have visions of two ghosts. They kept appearing on the boat and would somehow keep pace no matter how fast or slow they went. They could never quite lose them, but they could never actually catch up to them. The man ordered the crew to throw the mummies they had into the sea, despite the fact that he had just paid a handsome sum for them. As soon as that happened, it seems like the curse was lifted, the clouds parted, and the vision stopped altogether. And finally, number one now, we have love potions. While they may be resigned to fantasy in our modern times, alchemy, potions, and yes, even love potions were a very real thing for some ancient Egyptians. They could be used to win over the object of a person's affection, or just to cause trouble, enact revenge, or exploit people with the power of love. While that may sound interesting, the reality of how to make one is pretty grim, if I'm honest. One recipe involved taking the dandruff from the scalp of a dead person who had been murdered, mixing that with seven grains of barley buried in the grave of a dead man, and crushing all of that together with ten apple pips. Then add black dog's blood from a tick, some of your own blood, and a man's semen. Crush that all together, put it in a cup of wine, recite a formula, and bam, you've apparently got yourself a love potion, even if it did require a lot of death and murder. Alright guys, I never like to end a video on the words death and murder, so let's take a quick look at some of your comments. I'll be taking these from the Scary French Urban Legends video part 2. Jeremy Eli says, Hi Danny, these urban legends are pretty creepy, and can you please do urban legends of Switzerland? Yes, of course I can. As soon as I saw this comment, I wondered why we hadn't done that one already. So it's now on the list. In fact, I think I'll make that my next one to work on. You see how easy it is to get videos made by us? Just ask. Obviously nothing too weird though. Next up, Gatcha Creation says, I was watching this with my sister, and when it said they shot a wolf, according to her, I just stared in front of me and breathed deeply and bared my teeth. Apparently after, I just fell to the ground and after a few seconds got back up. I asked her why she was looking at me, and she said she told me everything everything, I said I remembered nothing. Well, that is kind of creepy. I'm sorry that me talking about wolves had that effect on you. I hope this doesn't happen every time I talk about some sort of mythical creature in his videos. I hate to see what you're like if I talk about zombies or vampires. Prenom Nom said, Your pronunciation of French words is terrible, but I had a good laugh and this content was mostly new for me, a French native, and interesting. So, merci beaucoup. Okay, fair enough. I may have 
butchered a few French words in that video, but sometimes it's hard, you know? I can do basic common French words quite well, but usually when I do these videos, they include place names that I have no clue how to pronounce, and there aren't many clues online sometimes. Luckily, my dad actually speaks fluent French, so maybe I'll give him a call next time I'm stuck on a tricky French word. And finally, we have Chloe X Gaming, who said, I have waited about six videos to see if my comment has popped up on the screen, but you guys haven't been doing them. Well, Honestly, I'm sorry Chloe, but I hope I can make it up to you with this. Here is me responding to your comment. I try and pick completely random ones that I find, not necessarily the top comments. I also like to go for the newest ones when a video first comes out. So if you want to appear in one of these videos, make sure you get your comment in as soon as possible. If you're reading this, comment right now. Who knows, we could be chatting in the very next video. And with that, I will say thanks for watching as always guys. My name is Danny Burke and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>